I am Vinny Todorich. Folks, your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent at the beginning of this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, guaranteed, just like our Friday guest. This guy's been on the show probably. He's been on the show as many times as probably Tim Noakes or, or eh, not Nina's been on more than anyone, but this guy's up there. He's been on the show three or four times, and uh, he's one of my favorite guests. He always brings the goods. Dr. Anthony J. How are you doing, Anthony? Yeah, Benny, doing good. How about you? Uh, I, I can't complain. So I, I don't want to, you know, I always feel like I brag so much about you, but you deserve it. Um, still at Mayo, Mayo Clinic? No, I actually left Mayo Clinic, and now I just do full-time DNA consulting. Um, so I, I left right around when they started pushing the vaccine and forcing people. I don't have a problem with people deciding they want to take the vaccine, but I do have right. a problem with them forcing people to take the vaccine at Mayo Clinic as a medical institution. So uh, that was part of it. And the other part was just, you know, I'm so busy doing genetic consults and, and, yeah. and writing also. So, you know, I decided to just break free and it's actually been working out great. You know, I'm busier than ever. No, I love hearing that. Look, you know, we're and I don't get into vaccine talk here because people have everyone's got an opinion. As you know, I've seen mm -hmm. all of your stuff online. I've seen what's happened to my buddy Ivor Cummins and, uh, you know, all, all the stuff, you know, n none of it is pretty. Um, you know, it's almost like if you have one type of opinion, your opinion doesn't count. And you should be banished to, you know, just put out to, to pasture and never be heard from again. Folks, uh, Dr. Anthony J is not just any doctor. I mean, you've done research. You've been in the lab. You were at Mayo Clinic. You're, you're the, these hoity-toity places. And you first came to my attention when you wrote the book, Extra Generation. And I think that was the first time you were on my show. And nope. Nope. I, I remember thinking, I don't know what to talk to this guy about. You know, Extra Generation? Huh. He's talking about estrogen. What, what, what are we going to talk about? But it became, you became one of my favorite guests and you were one of the most interesting guests that we had ever had on the show. And it's basically because of what was written in that book and the, the knowledge you had about estrogen and how we, we now have more estrogen than we know what to do with. And it comes from things around us. I, I, I'll never forget you, you telling me the new car smell. We all love the new car smell, right? But that that's off gassing of a plastic, right? Yep. Go on, Perfect. explain that. Let's start with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good, good place to start. So I mean, plastics, even if they're BPA free, they have a lot of uh, phthalates, they tend to have a, a compound, a chemical called phthalates, spelled P H T H A L A T E S, super weird spelling. So people don't like to talk about it. They like to talk about BPA. But they're both problematic. They both act like estrogen in our bodies. It's well established in the research. It takes a lot of years sometimes to see dramatic, you know, problems, health problems from these. But lowering testosterone is pretty immediate. Um, but sometimes you you know you see increased depression, increased anxiety, uh, lower sex drive, on and on and on. Uh, and the new car smell. I mean, these plastics. They're off gassing. They've done studies on literally on the new car smell they've done studies on children's mattresses especially infant mattresses where they cover them in plastics so the the kids aren't peeing through the mattress right and those are off gassing to the point where it's it increases risk of cancer in the long term i mean is that bad yeah so really yeah. high levels and I, I it drives me nuts because you know we're always trying to you know we're, we're trying to save the world with cow farts and you know by having less cow farts and you know, no one's looking at the real problems, you know, the, these, these phthalates and BPA. Explain what BPAs are. People hear the term BPA and, oh, I shouldn't be drinking from the bottle with this, uh, this, uh, uh, I'm saying arrow, but it's a, um, a pyramid, not a pyramid, more of a yeah, the recycling symbol. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Explain BPAs and phthalates and how they differ and what they do. And uh, I'm going to say this only one time during the show, and I promise I'll never say it again. Pretend I'm in second grade. And explain it to me because people when you when you guys get off into the weeds go in the wrong direction i'm in second grade go yeah right on well 
BPA, actually, it was invented in the 1920s by a guy named Charles Edward Dobbs, I believe. Um, and Charles Dobbs, he developed BPA for birth control, for the purpose of birth control. And then they discovered that you can make plastic out of it. And obviously that became huge money. If people have seen It's a Wonderful Life with George Bailey and all that, um, plastics were making tons of money, you know, and everybody was getting in on it and investing in it. And that's BPA. And, um, and of course, scientists told us that it doesn't leach. It's okay. It's safe. It doesn't leach, you know? <laughs> well, obviously now that we've done more recent research, it leaches. It ends up, if you've got plastic liquids in plastic, especially if you heat them up, there's a lot of leaching. But even at room temperature, I'm not a fan. There's enough leaching where you don't want to be disrupting your testosterone. And it just simply acts like estrogen in your body. And the problem is, if you make BPA-free a thing, and they have made that a thing in businesses and corporations. Um, in fact, 17 states have outlawed BPA in children's products like pacifiers and things like that. What mm. companies do is they use BPS. It's called bisphenol S. So they just manipulate the molecule a little tiny bit. It still acts like estrogen. It's probably worse for you. Still, you know, still basically is a form of birth control that if you take a high enough dose, but we're not taking that high of a dose, but um, the point is these companies just play this shell game where instead of using BPA, they use BPS. Instead of using BPS, they can use BPF. They can literally create an entire alphabet and phthalates are included in that. They, if you make bisphenol free plastics, you can use phthalates as an ingredient to make plastics. And again, those act like estrogen. They mess up your hormones. It's a problem. Yeah, it's really strange. You know, I'm always talking about that when I do the documentaries and everything else, you know, it's like, look, you know, big companies are not trying to kill you. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're they're trying to make money. That's why mm -hmm. they're there. That, that's what corporations do. They make money. Yeah. They're not you know, they're not actively trying to kill you. They're trying to make money. And yep. if you get screwed up in the process, well, so be it. Right? Exactly. Um, well, and they make more money too, if you're screwed up in the process, because then the pharmaceutical companies can come in and make more money, you know? Yeah, so it's you have to be your own. You have to be your own watch watchdog on this one. Look, I'm saying that all the time. If you're not advocating for yourself, you, you're done. Mm -hmm. You're done. And I hate to be that guy. You know, I, it really makes me sound like I'm I'm running around with a tinfoil hat on, telling everybody the sky is falling. Um, <laughs> uh, Anthony, tell me if you remember this. Let, let's see if I can. I, I don't even. Tell me if you remember this movie. I was going to go upstairs for a minute. Oh, no, I meant with your future. Your life. Well, that's a little hard to say. Ben. Excuse me. Mr. McGuire. Ben. Mr. McGuire. Come with me for a minute. I want to talk to you. Excuse us, Joanne. Of course. Yes. Thank you. I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir. You. Plastics. Exactly. How do you mean? There's a great future in plastics. Think about it. Plastics. There's a great future in plastics. I mean, the graduate. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's all they were talking about back then, turning everything into plastic. Um, yeah. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, and I'm not that old, I'm 60, right? Grew up in the 70s, got out of left high school in 81, right? Almost nothing was in plastic. Mm. It was all in glass, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Heinz, Heinz ketchup was so thick. So <laughs> thick shake it <laughs> that, that you know the commercial was they they had uh Carly Simon, she had a song called Anticipation that she sold to the high you know she Anticipation and you you just the the bottle is upside down and you you're watching it not come <laughs> do you know do you know how to get it out of the bottle yeah you just shake it like hell yeah <laughs> oh no if you shake it then it could go everywhere you hold the bottle upside down and you take the 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 other you know you, you, your other palm and you, uh -huh. you kind of hit 
up and away from it. So you know, okay. the inertia of pushing up drops it out, yeah. oh, and you won't funny. get it everywhere else. There was actually technique yeah, yeah. with glass <laughs> bottles, and then they figured, oh, let's put it in squirt bottles, and then they said, oh, let's put a big flat top on the squirt bottle, so it's always upside down because these sugar yeah. freaks need their ketchup as early and as often <laughs> as they can possibly get it. They can't wait yeah. for it. Oh my god. That's where we are now. And the high fructose corn syrup made it even more liquid, you know. Yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah. Um well and, and you know it's you know the to address kind of this idea that we're wearing tinfoil hats. I was talking to a doctor in Miami a couple of weeks ago. I was down there giving a talk for a bunch of medical doctors, and he said he used to have a policy. He does hormone replacement. It's just testosterone for men, you know? Right. And he runs a big clinic. He's got a, a lot of, uh, you know, subsidiary clinics and whatnot and pretty substantial uh, healthcare, you know, uh, I don't want to say audience, but you know what I mean? Patient base, a lot of patients. And he said he used to have a policy where he did not accept patients below 40 years old. If you're 38 years old, he wouldn't take you. If you're 35, he wouldn't accept you. You know, he's got too many people that are 60, 70. He's replacing testosterone, you know, like let's focus on older age. Now he says 80% of his patients are below age 40. He had to change the policy because his doors were getting beat down recently in the past 10 years. And that's never happened before. It used to be, he maybe would have one request every year or something from somebody who's below age 40. Now it's 80% of his people. So he obviously changed the policy, but it's a massive problem. Lowering testosterone, lowering sex drive. It causes apathy, sexual apathy, and just general apathy for life. That leads to depression and a lot of other things. You know, bone density goes down, facial structure changes, sex drive changes. I mean, scientists call it male feminization. It's a, not, it's, it's a major problem if your testosterone is low. And again, these chemicals, these estrogens are contributing to that. And there's other things too. I mean, people aren't exercising. People have deficiencies in magnesium and some other basic things. They're, they're doing a lot of soy. You know, there's a lot of other estrogens that are hitting, bombarding us from different angles. Like, um, you know, a lot of the fragrances and personal care products, these petroleum-based fragrances are a problem. So it's, it, there's a contribution, there's an additive effect, but, you know, it's a real problem. It's legitimate. You, you know, it's interesting, uh, you and I have met in person several times, you, you know how I'm built. Mm -hmm. no, no one would consider me overly built, but I'm, I'm very lean and very muscular. Yep. And I'm, I'm 60 now I just turned 60. And um, twice this week, this week, now in my gym, I, I, I have a gym behind me, like working mm -hmm. out, but I also go to a gym in town. I have a couple of memberships around town. Uh, I like going to different places, change the scenery. Twice this week, and I'm not exaggerating twice this week. Um, younger guys came up to me, they don't know who I am. They don't know, I have this online presence, they don't know NSNG, they know nothing about me. Right? They just know I'm old man in the gym. <laughs> I look old to them. Twice, the first guy asked me if I was on any kind of he used the word gear. He goes, Hey, <laughs> are you on gear? And I said, No, but um, I'll take that as a compliment. Now, the gear means uh, steroids, folks. Right. And, and look, I'm not guys on steroids have big, giant, bulbous muscles. Anthony can tell you I'm built, I'm lean. I keep myself lean. There's no fat on my body. I don't wear anything particularly um, uh, constraining where you can actually see it. But these guys can see it through loose t-shirts and everything else. First guy goes, hey, man, are you in gear? Second mm -hmm. guy asked me, um, how did he put it? This guy was a little older, probably, in, I want to say close to 50. He was losing his hair. And he goes, hey, man, are you on uh, HRT? I was like, mm -hmm. or, or HRT? No. And I came home and mentioned that to Serena. I said, honey, I got to ask twice this week if I'm juicing. <laughs> And yep. my, my testosterone is is pretty low. Um, we know that, you know, we know that it never really came back very high after my cancer. I was it, it just stayed low. It doesn't stop me from putting on muscle. <clears throat> my sexual drive is that of a 12 year old. No, not that good. But, all right, let's call it a 14 year old. But 
at 60, I still have a great sexual drive. It's all there. Mm -hmm. And when I have people like Dr. Lisa Stroman on this Friday show and all these experts, they're talking about incels. They're talking about um, uh, th these kids, you know, aren't having sex. You know, they're having less sex and no sex at all and on and on and on. What I, I, is it? Is it the cell phones? Is it the fact that there's no vitamin D that's producing mm -hmm. anything that not getting out in the sun? They're staying inside. They're not exercising. They're they're <clears throat> sniffing everything from, you know, uh, your know, phthalates to BPAs and drinking from nothing but plastic. And is it all of it? What's happening? Well, and how do we turn this? How how do we turn this around? Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I do DNA consulting for the military for the special forces, and they had a summit. Uh, <clears throat> that they had me speak at one time. And actually Nina, Nina was there, Nina Teicholz. And I only knew her through you. And we talked, we hung out quite a bit at that summit. That was the first time I met her in person, but uh, it was a secret summit. So we weren't allowed to kind of promote it on social media and whatnot. They were okay with me talking about it to people, but not promoting it at the time. <clears throat> but um, one of the speakers gave an entire one hour lecture on low vitamin D and how it lowers your testosterone. So that's definitely an important aspect to remember. As you mentioned, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, this demonization of sunshine is absurd. You know, our ancestors yeah. for thousands of years out in the sunshine all the time, they've done studies on hunter gathering tribes. Everybody in those tribes is between 70 and 100 on their vitamin D levels. And the average American is 30, Yeah, you know, just to give you some sense. And if you go to the doctor and you get a 30, they tell you that's fine. They say, oh, you're normal, you're fine. And that's very problematic for testosterone. So there are a lot of, uh, it's an uphill battle. There's a lot of things that are counteracting our testosterone that we need to fix as a culture. But, you know, the, a lot of the, the insidious ones are the ones that people aren't talking about and they're not thinking about. And, I, I, and again, like you mentioned, it's, it's not just one thing every day. It's, it's 10 things. You know, these people are rubbing soap on their skin and they think it washes off smell your arm after you rub the soap on it smells like soap the fragrance stays on your skin it prefers it's kind of fatty it's oily it prefers to stay on the skin instead of go down the drain the shampoos the axe body sprays you know all that stuff the, even the laundry detergent they've even done scientific studies on dermal uptake they call it dermal uptake which just basically means skin uptake skin absorption uh, of the fragrances from laundry detergent. Sure enough, it increases your blood levels. You know, they did a study on sunscreen, Vinny. Yeah. They had one application of sunscreen. They put sunscreen one time, seven days later, it was above the government's safety limits in people's blood. Really? From one from, application. From one this application. Is, and the chemical is called oxybenzone, O X Y B E N Z O N E, oxybenzone. And yeah, one application. And there's parents putting that stuff on their little kids, you know, just totally destroying their hormones. And again, the government safety limit is way above what it should be. You know, that's like cancer causing levels. That's like danger levels. Right. I'm worried about just lowering your testosterone, you know, like, and that happens at much lower levels than the cancer causing levels. Um, so people are getting bombarded from so many different sources. And then on top of their crappy lifestyles don't help either. So you know, there's a lot of ways you can fix this naturally. And sometimes it's permanent. You know, sometimes people need to go on hormone replacement therapy, especially with age, um, in order to fix this, but at least start by getting rid of the fake estrogens in your life, you know? Yeah, I, a lot to unravel here. So I'm going to ask you because I'm always interested in fixing me first. And if I could fix me, I could fix other people. Um, I only use soap. Um, armpits, you know, as Serena and I, you know, giblets and armpits and you know, feet, wherever bacteria can build up and cause a smell. Mm -hmm. um, no one would ever tell you that I smell. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I've always had people say to me, what type of soap are you using? It's like, if you knew how little soap I use, you would be shocked. Um, always hated the shampoos that smelled a lot. Yeah. Right? So no. I've always used um, the same soap in my hair. And I'm gonna ask you about my soap. Um, mm -hmm. You still I've, using that pine stuff? Was, pine tar yeah. soap, yeah. Uh, I used yeah. to use um, um, Grandpa's exclusively, but mm -hmm. I think that company was bought and they changed the formula. Mm -hmm. 
hmm. because it wasn't the same soap anymore. It wasn't as rich and it, it wasn't dark. And, and then I moved on to one called Packers. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, it's pine tar in some kind of glycerol, and I only use it, like I said, bits and parts, and I'll put a little bit in my hair and, and kind of scrub my hair out whenever. Usually when I have dirt in my hair from, you know, blowing leaves or, you know, we were talking about hunting before the show, anything like that where I got dirty or grimy, right? Then I'll I'll put the shampoo. Otherwise, I just kind of wash it out. Is there a better soap than that? Is Or should I not use soap at all? You tell me, how do we get this? Uh, yeah, I like what you're doing. I think it's good, you know? I mean, I just don't like it when people are using these products with these long, long ingredient lists. You can't pronounce any of the chemicals on there. You know, and half of them, they haven't even done scientific studies, especially long-term scientific studies for more than six weeks or something. Wow. And so, you know, I don't think people need to get too worried about if you got some kind of simple soap product that is either fragrance free or if it has fragrances, it's essential oils or something that you can read the labels on and understand what it is. It's perfectly fine. You know, there's nothing wrong. Some of those have medicinal impacts, you know, like um, some, some of these essential oils are anti-inflammatory, for example, things like that. Like so there's actually positive benefits to having certain fragrances, but these petroleum based ones, they basically bastardize the process. You know, they, they trick your brain. The new car smell is a good example. They trick yeah. your brain into thinking that you're sexually attracted to the thing, right? Like it's yeah. like an estrogen. It smells like estrogen to your brain. And so it's kind of like a pheromone or something. And then people, people are impressed with that. And they should be the opposite. They should be repelled by that. But our brains haven't quite figured this out because it's such an artificial, man-made, re historically recent problem. Yeah, you know, a couple of the kids in the neighborhood that, you know, I, I, I play basketball with the kids in the neighborhood and do this whole thing. And they're, they're getting into their teen years. So now all of a sudden they're interested in girls. So they, they're interested in smelling nice. So, mm -hmm. you know, their hair smells like, to me, it smells like a chemical. I get the fact that it's supposed to smell perfumey or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think there's yeah. a hint of that Axe body spray, which I wish <laughs> I could go tell every kid right now you're not doing what you, you can stop. You need to stop right now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, you know, I'm just old man Vinny. I'm just old Grand Torino. And they're not going to listen to me. Right. Yeah. You know, hopefully I don't smell like a, you know, a pine forest, but you know, because all I do is fill a pine tar on me. I don't think people realize that all soap is, it is a lubricating device to lift dirt off of your skin. You know, it's lubricity. Is it? as they call it. Um, so you can basically do it with almost anything, right? Or what's the best way to do it if you're not going to use regular soap? Any ideas? Yeah, I suppose you could use activated charcoal or something, you know, like, I mean, there's a lot of different things. Um, you know, it, like if you have poison ivy, for example, um, and you just wash with soap, it doesn't really work well enough, you know, because that oil like imagine sticking your hands in some used car oil some black oil and you lift them up your hands will be all black and if you just wash them with soap especially these lotion infused soaps that they have nowadays your hands would still be black right <laughs> and what you need is a little bit of abrasion in there like some sand in there some something that's got a little bit of abrasion um just a scrubber you know yeah and uh that can be just a mechanical scrubber or something built into the soap, but that helps a lot too. But I think also, and you kind of have hinted at this, our bodies have a lot of natural healthy bacteria on the skin, in our mouths, in our guts, you know, on and on. And that's a good thing. And that's another area that's been so demonized back in the day, right? When, when they had these antibiotics coming out and they just said, bacteria are bad, let's kill all the bacteria. And they didn't realize how beneficial a lot of these are. And a lot of that's carried on, right? Like it's there's this residual idea that bacteria are bad. Mm -hmm. And my lab at Boston University Medical School, um, we were the ones that discovered that plaque on your teeth increases plaque in your arteries. Um, and that became kind of a famous discovery. But people said, well, how the hell does that work, right? Like if you have plaque in your teeth, how does that lead to plaque in your arteries? And there was a follow-up study that showed 
the bad bacteria in people's teeth and in their mouths can secrete inflammatory chemicals into their blood. And then those inflammatory chemicals going around their bloodstream damage arteries. And then of course the doctors blame cholesterol, which is completely <laughs> absurd. Um, but it, because it starts with inflammation, it always starts with inflammation when you have damage in your arteries. And, um, and again, if you have a good, healthy ecosystem in your mouth with those bacteria, your mouth is much more resistant to the bad populations of bacteria taking over. It's a war, you know, and the skin is the same way, but it's a lot less talked about and it's a lot less studied and people just don't care that much. But I'm sure if there was a lot of research done, the more on the skin biome, the skin bacteria, it'd be very impressive and people would get a lot more serious about it. And we don't necessarily need all the studies all the time, right? There's not a lot of drugs that are, they're going to develop to improve skin bacteria and things. You know, it's not really in the pharmaceutical company realm, but I'm telling you, if they did a lot of studies, the more studies they do on this, and they may do some in the future or a lot in the future, who knows, but they're going to show that the skin bacteria are super beneficial, symbiotic with your whole body. Yeah, I've had doctors on this show talk about the skin and all the different the, the thousands of bacteria that just live on your skin, you're not mm -hmm. supposed to be scrubbing them off. As a matter of fact, yeah. it's weird that when I do get really, you know, like dirt on the skin, like ground in dirt from, you know, being out hiking or something or camping for a few days. On those days when I come home and actually wash with soap on my skin, I feel weird doing it. Because mm -hmm. as soon as I do it, once I dry off, I get this tightness all over my skin that I never feel. My skin never feels tight. My yeah. face never feels tight. But if I got dirt on my face, and I take a little, little bit of that soap and put it on my face. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm just putting a light coat. I'm not going to scrub it in and just get the water to get it off. Mm -hmm. Still, you, you feel that dryness in your skin. And you know, you see the commercials on television. Oh, your skin is cracking. You need to get you know, you need to put this cream on now, you know, more, more, yeah, more products, more money. Yeah, let, let's, you know, you, you, we told you to wash everything off your skin. Now you need to put it back on. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, if it's you so don't crazy. wash it off in the first place, then you don't have to put it back on. <laughs> yeah, well, and there's, a, I'm sure you maybe have heard of parabens, because a lot of personal care products yeah. have parabens. And nowadays, a lot of them are paraben free. After I published my book, it raised a lot of awareness, a lot of companies are saying paraben free on the label, which is good. I'm glad they're going paraben free because parabens, they've done studies, animal studies, mind you, but still studies, it, in, it accelerates aging. Parabens accelerate aging. A lot of these women are putting these creams on their face and you look on the labels and I'm telling you, get out the labels and look at it. It'll say parabens, it'll say methyl paraben, it'll say propyl paraben, it'll say butyl paraben. It has all these different parabens that's a chemical that accelerates aging, at least in animal studies, which is the opposite of what you want to be doing to your skin. So it's hilarious, right? Because people think they're making themselves and maybe they are temporarily looking a little bit younger. But in the long term, it's the it's turning out opposite. Uh, you know, look, my wife is as natural as I am, except for the, the cream on the skin. Mm. Uh, she, yeah. She's always she goes, you know, the skin, my, my skin is so dry. And I was like, yeah, if you just let your skin take over for a minute. And she doesn't yeah. scrape it off with with soap, you know, she does what I do sure. in parts and move on. And mm -hmm. um, she's a bond girl, they don't smell anyway, by definition. But you, you know, the bottom line is, is that you know, they wash all the stuff, you know, they, they, when your skin gets used to getting something, it doesn't have to produce its own oil, it's exactly. not fixing itself. And it's like, honey, don't do it, don't do it. But she does it. And there's nothing I could do about it. You know, I can, yeah, I can either get in a fight or just not say anything. So I just try not to say anything. Well, just make sure it doesn't have parabens. <laughs> like at least start there and look on the labels. I can't read it. It's written so small in those damn labels. <laughs> look, I, I'm just mining my side of the street and trying yeah. to have a good relationship along the way. So you, know, <laughs> you can only say so much. Um, I'm going to, I want to do a quick, a, a quickie ad here. I want to get back into uh, testosterone just a little bit. Um, and then we're going to move on to something else that's near and dear to my heart, uh, peptides. <clears throat> but before we do that, folks, one thing that Dr. Anthony J will always agree to is really, really, really good olive oil. Uh, look, the guy, the guy's not an idiot. He's, he's one of the smartest people I know. And he wants the good stuff. Villa Capelli olive oil is the longest 
running sponsor of the show, Villa Capelli, folks. You want to get some good. Look, in this country, we're allowed to cut this stuff up to 40 percent and still call it pure 100 percent olive oil. You want to talk about the government allowing people to lie? That's one of the biggest lies out there, bigger than anything else Anthony J could come up with. So you want the good stuff, go to Villa Capelli, or you could go to VinnyTartarese.com, click through the banner. Either way, put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E at checkout, and you'll save 10%. If you spend over $125 after the Vinny discount, you'll also get free shipping. So I tell people, get two three-liter tins of olive oil. It'll last you a couple of years, a year and a half. Keep it in a cool, dry place. And um, boom, you're ready to rock and roll. Villa Capelli olive oil, promo code Vinny. We're talking to Dr. Anthony J, who wrote one of my favorite books, Extra Generation. Um, I want to get back into testosterone because, you know, we were talking about taking testosterone, you know, just to get up to numbers, right? Just getting to the, the numbers you should be at at your age, or what we think those numbers are. But we know that a lot of these kids now I see it on Instagram every day. They're pumped up, they're ripped out. They're not on, as I call it, they're not on the Arnold Schwarzenegger amount of steroids. That that was child's play. You know, those guys were taking Diana Ball and Winstrol and, and child's play. Mm -hmm. compared to what these guys are doing today. And we're finding, I think last year alone, 29 or 30 something IFBB pros dropped dead right before competitions. Mm -hmm. These are 20 something year old and early 30 year old men and women dropping dead from yeah. taking things you're not supposed to take. I mean, some of it is not even fit for human consumption. Uh, you know anything about these drugs and, and what they are? I mean, a little bit, but I try and stay away from that stuff because I just recommend people avoid it, you know, and again, natural hormone replacement therapy. I'm a big fan if you need it, you know, and here, if you've tried everything else and you've done all the natural things, but yeah, these artificial ones, definitely precautionary tale in the recent history. And yeah, I, I yeah, steer clear trend buterol, trend, whatever trend is, trend and trend clear. Long. Yeah. Yeah. Trend yeah. Long. Well, and then, you know, you know, it's funny because, B, you know, how we talked before about how BPA can be, it can be modified slightly. So they call it BPS, bisphenol S. So instead of bisphenol A, they make bisphenol S or they make bisphenol F or whatever letter of the alphabet. They've done the same thing with hormones, with testosterone. They make slightly different versions of testosterone that your liver can't break down. And then they stay in your body a lot longer. And it's not a natural thing. It's not good for your body, but it works. It's more anabolic, right? So it amp amplifies the anabolism, the anabolic pathways, the muscle building pathways. And so it's actually quite interesting that they've done the same thing with bisphenol A, you know, with these chemists. They literally hire professional chemists to come in and manipulate these molecules in the same way. Um, so, but instead of trying to trick a drug test or to try and get somebody absolutely gigantic, they're going the other direction to just try and make it so they can legally use it, um, as a plasticizer. When does, you know, we were talking about the new car smell. Um, you know, look, I never drink anything from a water bottle and people will say to me, come on, Vin, just, it, it's one little bottle of water. And it's like, yeah, but think about it between the time that they bottled that water and the time it ended up in my hand to go into my mouth, I'm guessing it could easily be six or eight months of that water just sitting there getting hot, cold, hot, cold, depending on what, what the temperatures are, you know, it could be on a truck getting 90 degrees, 100 degrees in the summertime, just leaching. I don't think people realize how much estrogen can possibly be in that and that just that little one 20 ounce bottle of water that they're telling me, oh, then come on, it's, it's benign. It's benign. What say you? Oh, yeah. Well, I write specifically about these numbers in my book. And it's, it's surprisingly bad. You know, it's surprising when you look at the actual numbers. Um, in fact, you know, some of these chemicals, in fact, almost all of these chemicals Europe has much stricter regulations, right? Like the European laws are much stricter than the American laws because American politics are much more influenced by money and corporate corporate influence. 
But in, even China has stricter regulations on parabens, for example, than we have in America. And I talk about this in my book, which is crazy, you know, because right now China is recognizing like, hey, these chemicals are feminizing people and they're causing lower testosterone. And, um, you know, and there's a push in China to kind of reverse some of that. And they're backtracking and, and reacting against this. Um, and again, we've done nothing. You know, there was I have a scientist friend out at Washington. He did a TED talk. I think it's called Ancestral Ghosts in the Genome or some really technical term, like some technical title. But it was an epigenetic talk about epigenetics. And his name is uh, Michael Skinner, Dr. Michael Skinner. And by the way, he thinks humans are going extinct. <laughs> like that's his personal, yeah. you know, like I'm having lunch with him and that's what he thinks, but he won't, he won't usually say that publicly. But, um, but what's interesting about Dr. Skinner is you know, he gave a talk over in Europe about a chemical that acts like estrogen and messes with your hormones. They outlawed that chemical two weeks later. It was a fungicide, like a chemical they spray on grains and things to protect against fungus growing. That was that talk he gave was like seven years ago. That chemical is still totally legal in America. It took them two weeks in Europe to outlaw it. In America, seven years later, we're still stewing in this fungicide if you're eating grains. That's one of the reasons I like NSNG, right? Because obviously we're talking about lots of carbs and people are overdoing carbs in our culture with the grains, but also and the sugar falls into that as well. But the grains also have a lot of mold and a lot of these chemical sprays that they're using that screw with your hormones. And then, you know, there's a lot of other problems <laughs> with the grains, you know, in terms of the uh, lectins and all kinds of other things. So, you know, if you just kind of package that all up, it's not one thing with the grains. It's a lot of things, especially in America. Yeah. No, we, uh, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, as long as we allow these lobbyists to give money to the politicians, the policies won't change. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what side you're on, folks. As you know, I don't talk politics on the show. We, we have a problem here and everyone's asleep at the wheel. Um, you know, uh, a couple of things came up. Um, we talked about it the last time. I was drinking from a Nalgene bottle. And, you know, you were talking about, you know, we talk about the triangle with the one, two, three, one through six, from what I remember, seven, one, number, to seven. Yep, one yep. through seven. And, um, you know, I just assume now, Gene, they're in the hiking, you know, the whole thing. And I'm, we're told this number is better than that number. And you and I were chit chatting. <clears throat> and you said, what numbers on the bottom of, you, you know, I'm sitting there doing a podcast, I looked at it, I think it was mm -hmm. the number six, or whatever you went, that's the worst one. It was seven. It was seven. Yeah. It was seven. I and you were like, that's that, BPA. That, yeah. Yeah. That, that he goes, <laughs> and I took the bottle out of my hand and dropped it in the garbage can full of water. And you'll notice th this, ah, this, there you go. this thing is all dented up. I went out and bought this oh. the next day. You, you see all the oh. dented, dropped it so many oh. times. I only drink water from this, this metal canister. Now Yeah. it Good comes out of, out of the tap. As a matter of yep. fact, I had two of these. And the other one, um, this guy, um, he's no longer with us. Um, his name is Ozzy. He was uh, Adam Carolla's good friend. Mm -hmm. um, and Ozzy was helping me move out of LA. He was helping us pack up our pods to get out of there. And it was hot. And I said, Ozzy, this is yours. What I meant to say was, Ozzy, this is yours while you're here. And I took a purple ribbon and put it on the top of his. I said, mm -hmm. this is yours. And yeah. he took it as, oh, you just gave this to me for good. <laughs> because it's quite so cheap. And when Ozzy, when we were done like a week later, Ozzy picked yeah. up, picked up his canister and walked out. And I went, ah, he can have it. And yeah. um, <laughs> poor guy died. He died doing, he got COVID and died. Wow. <clears throat> and, you know, he was one of those guys that, but look, Ozzy was not that he wasn't healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, he had comorbidities left, right and center. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lost a goat, man. He was just this good old dude. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ever since you told me that, Plastic right. were gone from my life that day. Look, look, the coffee cup I drink from metal, metal. Oh, yeah. I no. just finished a, a double espresso metal, uh, or yeah. I'll use porcelain because you yeah, said glass. it was okay. Glass, yep, yep. that kind of thing. I've completely gone away from any of it. And I wasn't even using that much of it. To, even if I want like a, a Pellegrino, right? Mm -hmm. 
It's got to come from, they make it in plastic or glass bottle. It's got to come from a glass bottle with me. Yeah, same. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's wise, you know, and it's much more sustainable. This, this whole Texas sized, you know, floating plastic trash heap in the middle of the ocean is a, is a sign of our times, you know, it's not good yeah. for the environment to be just single use. It's crazy. You see these families, right? I have kids, you know, and you see these families on Christmas or whatever, and they give their kids like 20 plastic toys. <laughs> yeah. And they have this mountain of trash and this mountain of new plastic. And then the next year, that's all and ends up slowly going in the trash. And again, talk about off gassing. There was a study I mentioned in my book, you know, they did it with California daycare centers. And once again, just the air quality in there was so full of these plastic chemicals, cancer causing levels. Um, it was crazy because those levels are way beyond hormone disruption, you know, and that's what's so frustrating. So, you know, I think it's the right idea to minimize this stuff. You're never going to get rid of plastics completely, you know, like there's always going to be your shower curtain or there's always going to be friggin' something that's made out of plastic. But if you minimize it, you know, that's a step in the right direction. Then your body can clear out the last bits that you have in there. Use the sauna, make sure or go exercise really hard. Make sure you're sweating. You know, those things help also because, again, nobody's perfect. We're never going to be able to get rid of these things. So you got to do other, you got to eat healthy, exercise, you know, all this other stuff to help mitigate some of those other hormones. I was going to ask, can we, can we get rid of it? It's something like sweat. How good is go that? Ahead. Let's say I'm on my spinner. 90 minutes a day or my rowing machine sweating my butt off. Oh yeah. That where we want to be or, or what's the deal there? Yeah. I think the minimum effective dose that they found in scientific studies is at least 10 minutes of sweating three times a week. If you're doing that, you're kicking ass again, that's minimum. You can do more than that. It's fine. But at the minimum, you got to be sweating three times a week. And um, they call them bus studies. If people want to look them up, they're very interesting. B U S bus blood, urine, and sweat bus studies phthalates bus studies bpa you know bus studies whatever look it up uh and they've done studies where for example they they check people's urine uh the letter u in bus uh they check people's urine and there are hardly any bpa in there hardly any phthalates and you say oh look at that they don't they don't have much of this stuff in their system and they have those exact same people go into a sauna and then they measure their sweat full of bpa full really? of phthalates yeah, so you sweat the stuff out better than you piss it out. Interesting. And look, I've been talking for two years since I moved here. I, they built a playhouse, the people that were here, you know, these girls, 40 year olds now, the, the women that played in that playhouse. And it's half falling apart. And we keep talking about tearing it down. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm gonna have it shored up. I'm gonna line the inside of it and turn that into my own sauna. Winter and summer, oh. I'm just going that thing. And just, yeah. you know, just, I, I love a good fits. Yeah. And yeah. I just love to get in there and just sweat. <clears throat> but I, I do it all the time on my bike. I do it on my treadmill, um, on my uh, rowing machine. Maybe I just need to up that. And I, I guess I'm doing all the right things, right? I mean, I'm sweating. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not eat, drinking from plastic. I just I bought a new car a couple of years, two years ago now. I'm not planning on buying one until this one hits somewhere near half a million miles. I'm just not into buying cars anymore. And I'm, I'm too old. You know, it's like, who wants a car? You know, you just need so but I mean, yeah. who needs a new anything? Right? When there's so many used things out there that we can use. I guess I'm becoming like an old hippie or something. <laughs> well, what I do is I, you know, that new car smell when you get in there, and it's hot in the summer, I just roll down the windows for a second and just let the air flush it out a little it's just like anything else just imagine the air was like food coloring or something and it's really yeah. concentrated and you just open that up into like a really dilute bucket of water and it just lets it all out and that's all it takes you don't have to sit there with your windows down for two hours or whatever um you know especially if it's really really hot but yeah it's off gassing you know i think people should think about that and should make an effort little ways you know little things over a long period of time it's just like anything else you're not going to get jacked and ripped and all this kind of thing in one day. <laughs> You're yeah. not going to change your hormones in one day. It's going to be a slow process. I've seen people double their testosterone in six weeks just by getting rid of fragrances and all this garbage, the plastics that they're drinking out of, stuff like that. They just do a little overhaul. They 
base it on my book's recommendation because my book lays out like a gold a gold plan a silver plan and a bronze plan like the bronze plan being like if you're in college you don't have any money here's what you got to do you know you got you got to do some basic stuff all right, all right, all right uh, let's do that uh, you, oh, yeah. you want to go read his book anyway but what's on the bronze plan let's say i, yeah, let's like, say I can afford the bronze plan what, what do i get for my money well, a lot of what you mentioned, right? Like the soaps, the personal care products and the water, that's the, the two heavy hitters. You know, you got to overhaul your person. Like people are putting all these fragrances, get fragrance free. If you don't know what to get for personal care products, just go fragrance free. Uh, you can get cheap Walmart, whatever, fragrance free, you're way better off. It still might have some shit in it, but at least you're, you're in the right direction. And then the drinking water, again, filter your drinking water, make sure you have activated charcoal in your filters almost all the filters do even the Brita filters and all that. And then just don't store it in plastic. It's really simple. Um, but like, if you're a professional NFL athlete, you know, you're going to want to take it a lot further than that. And, and by the way, my bronze plan also includes soy. You don't want to be eating soy. <laughs> like I tell people, if you don't do anything else, never use any kind of soy product whatsoever yep. at all. Yep. Start Correct. with that. Yep. You're winning. But yep. go I've, I've, I've literally been invited to speak at vegan conferences, Vinny, which is hilarious because I'm a hunter, you know, I'm like a deer yeah. hunter and stuff. And, uh, and they've uninvited me when they found out that I'm against soy. And it's like, look, every, and this is just because of corporate influence, right? Because they have all these processed food companies at these sure. conferences, these vegan conferences, and they're selling all these soy products. And they don't want me up on the stage saying it's bad. But I will say it's bad because every scientist agrees that soy acts like estrogen. Nobody disagrees with that. Scientists will argue that it's good estrogen instead of bad estrogen or something like that, but they all agree it acts like estrogen. Yeah. And, and it's like, that's the last thing we need in our culture with all the plastics and all the, the, the sunscreens and, and all the fragrances and all this other stuff. Some of these chemical sprays, these, these pesticides and herbicides acting like estrogen. The last thing we need is to throw another estrogen in the mix, you right. know? Um, so yeah, there, that's another one, I guess, on the bronze plan. Um, just pretty basic, but, you know, it's, it, it takes a mental shift. People have to think differently a little bit. Okay, so that's bronze. Now let's go up a level. Let's say I got a job, I'm out of college, I'm making a good 30 to 50 thou a year, I'm living in an apartment. Let's say I can afford a little better than the bronze idea. <laughs> What, what yeah. are we looking at now? Boy, yeah, I'm, guess, I'm I mean, guessing we're doing all the bronze stuff plus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you kick it up a notch. I mean, so on my website, you know, ajconsultingcompany.com, I have a lot of suggestions and it's it's endless. And I can't remember exactly how I laid it out between the, the, the silver and the gold plans, just to be honest. Uh, so people have to read my book to look at the specific details. But you know, I literally mentioned shower curtains because if you've got like a plastic cheapy shower curtain, they've done scientific studies, ironically, about the off gassing because that hot water, that steam accelerates the molecular motion. And now you've got oh. more plastics off gassing into the air than if you just have like if you've got a plastic carpet. I personally don't even buy plastic carpets. I get, uh, you know, like nylon carpets. You can get different. But the the uh, anything with polyethylene terephthalate, they call it poly you know a polyester yeah that's technically plastic that's got phthalates in it polyethylene terephthalate i don't wear polyester underwear for example i just wear cotton underwear they don't breathe as good but at least i'm not putting plastic uh, let me in. let me help you uh I'm, I'm gonna tell you something and mm. once you do it you'll never go back mm. winter and summer go to wool underwear you will never look mm. back and i know what you're gonna say but, oh it's itchy no it's not itchy, itchy. when you buy the <laughs> this high end stuff. The only thing you have to do is take a little extra care, you don't put it in the dryer and this kind of thing. What yeah. it, number one, it wicks better than any of the other stuff out there. Hmm. You know, you're hiking, you're you're hunting, you know, let's say you, you you're out in Montana, and you bring down a, a moose or an elk or something, you got to quarter it and bring it out. You know, how my sweating you're doing, even though it's five below zero. Mm -hmm. You know, how my sweating you start doing those yeah. underwear will save your life. Of course, when you're awesome. there, you'll have the long version, but you probably have the long version of, of wool underwear anyway, right? Correct. Yeah. Just this is the short around. version of it. You can wear it all, all year round, especially if you're a hiker, camper, this kind yeah. of thing. They don't build yeah. wool doesn't build up bacteria at all. It just mm -hmm. keeps breathing it away. Yeah. 
exactly. I mean, that's, you're talking gold level stuff here. I mean, you know, even bed sheets, I, I personally bring my pillowcases when I go traveling because I don't bring the pillow, you know, it's too much, but I'll throw a pillowcase in my luggage. I just have like a, a luggage that's ready to go. It's got my toiletries in there. Yeah. It's got like whatever, but um, you know, I keep a pillowcase in there and I make sure it's cotton. I don't want to be breathing. You know, I'm okay with some, some polyester sheets or something sometimes, but I, you know, I don't want to be breathing off of a polyester sheet all night long, for example. Yeah. You know, so little things like that, like uh, the list is long and it, 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 it kind of makes people cringe a little because it sounds expensive, right? It's like, oh shit, now I got to get pillowcases. Oh shit, now I got to get underwear. Well, you're going to get that stuff anyway. So like you can wait until your stuff wears out and just slowly build up, at least have the knowledge, you know, and that's, yeah. and, and, and so that's what I tell people, you know, start with the knowledge. It's this crazy idea that we're going to cure breast cancer by raising awareness of breast cancer, passing out pink ribbons. It's nonsense, you know, like dressing up football players like newborn baby girls. It's not curing breast cancer. But yeah. what actually fixes the problem is what's causing breast cancer. The reason breast cancer is up 250% since 1980, estrogen chemicals, these fake estrogen chemicals. Yeah. That's what we should be raising awareness about. It's a real problem, you know, and the more the more at risk of breast cancer the more of a professional athlete, the more of a health optimizer, the more careful you have to be. Um, I want to move on just a little bit um, because there's always so much I want. You need to come back more often. There's always too many questions for you. Um, <clears throat> I'm noticing, I'm always looking for the perfect toothpaste, mm. right? Because, um, yeah, look, I'm one of those guys, people talk about, oh, I want to take a nitrate precursor. It's like, well, your mouth, you were talking about the mouth earlier. That's, you know, you're building up those precursors in your mouth while you're sleeping from the bacteria. And that can set you up for high nitrogen levels in the morning and everything else, which is great. I never want to mess with my mouth too much, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I floss twice a day, been doing that since high school. Um, of course, back then I was using the minty as minty, crusty stuff I can get because I wanted to not have bad breath. I wanted to see if I can get a girl. Um, now I'm seeing, I'm always trying to find the least toothpaste, toothpaste out there. Mm, yeah. Or how I could get away with not even using toothpaste. And yeah. I'm noticing some of the cleanest stuff, they're touting no fluoride anymore. Now, when I grew up, it was all, you had to have fluoride. They were putting fluoride in the water, fluoride, fluoride. Mm -hmm. Now they're, mm -hmm. they're touting the best, best toothpastes out there do not have Fluoride. What's going on? What am I missing? Oh, yeah. uh, it's funny. You, ask, you, you, you wonder about this because I did a couple of YouTube videos, Vinny, a long time ago on fluoride. I went through the research because I had kids. They were little kids at the time. And I said to myself, well, what's the story on fluoride? I want to figure this out for myself, for my kids. And then I'll just do a YouTube video. on. It. And I dug into the research. I did some serious work on this. And my conclusion was basically fluoride is nonsense. It doesn't even help your teeth. You know, you get trace amounts. If you're eating healthy, you don't need to add more toxic fluoride crap. And even if you, even if you swallow one thousandth of your toothpaste, it's too much. It's too much fluoride. Wow. So I'm a fan of not having fluoride in the toothpaste, but which is against most dentists because the dentists of course are trained to, to basically like it's dogma. You have to have fluoride, but What's crazy about it is YouTube, I did a couple of videos on fluoride. And if you search the exact title of my videos, you can't find it. Like they shadow banned the crap out of those videos. Oh, don't even start me on shadow banning. I get I get throttled back and shadow banned and everything oh. like you would not believe. Yep. Yep. If, if you don't fit the narrative, right? Um, man, yeah. they go hard. And and this is a good example. So after I did that research, I'll just tell you the conclusion. I avoid fluoride. I get fluoride free. I also avoid carrageenan, which is a long, fancy word. It's just a seaweed extract, but it's a little bit inflammatory. And the last it's thing I find it in milk, it. folks. It's in milk and uh, also it's in heavy cream. Ice creams. Yep. Yeah. Ice yep. creams. It, it's a gummy yep. substance. Exactly. Um, yep. do, do you mind mentioning which uh, toothpaste you use? Oh, yeah. I use one called uh, Kiss My Face. That's the brand. Um, and it's on my website, uh, the AJ Consulting Company.com page. But um, 
I also talked, when I was doing this research on fluoride, I talked to a Harvard scientist, PhD friend of mine. He's been a scientist for 20 years. He literally took me to the Harvard club, which is like an exclusive club. You have to be a graduate of Harvard to go there and all this. And we're having like lobster bisque at the Harvard club. And I was asking him like, what's the story on fluoride? And he said, look, I don't tell anybody this publicly, <laughs> but he said, I only brush my teeth with water, with an electric toothbrush, because the electric toothbrushes, there's good scientific evidence that they work better. Electric toothbrush, just pure water. He's been doing that for over 20 years. Uh, and he's never had a cavity in his life. And by the way, I've never had a cavity in my life either. Part of that's diet, obviously. I don't eat a bunch of nonsense. And then part of it is just, you know, maybe good genetics, but also I'm not, you don't need that freaking fluoride. This idea that you need it and all that is nonsense. It's mostly diet. Yeah. You know, before the turn of the last century, nobody used toothpaste. I think it was like Pepsi Dent or one of those they convinced you that your mouth can feel tingly and you know, they put a little mint inside of this paste. Mm -hmm. And so you, you know, and, and if people felt, Oh, they had to put the mint in there. Mm. Because it, yeah. it felt tingly, it felt like something was going on. And people went, <laughs> yeah. Oh, obviously, my mouth is cleaner, because it feels cleaner. And yeah. th there was no truth behind any of it. Oh, right? yeah. Back then, they were just lying on advertisements and stuff, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, <laughs> like the Coca Cola ads. You seen the cigarette ads where they tell you like cigarettes make you younger and stuff? It's insane. Oh, listen, I I ran one. If you look at my Instagram from well, this is coming out, folks, in three weeks. You're gonna have to go three weeks back in my Instagram. I was showing a, a cigarette ad from the 1970s. Yeah, the amount of toxic masculinity that was going on. <laughs> they, they got the Marlboro man. It's a Marlboro commercial. She's going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at that style, you know, over there. Yeah, he chased off three of my best mares. They don't make stallions. And then they go from the horse and they fade to the guy with a strong jaw. Yeah, yep. they don't make stallions like this anymore. Yeah, <laughs> stallion. It, it's almost homoerotic. <laughs> and I'm like sitting there going, is this really happening? This was on television. I had remembered that ad. You got to go, Anthony, go look tonight at Insta Are oh, you on Instagram? Sure. Go yeah. like three or four days back. And you'll see the okay. one where I'm standing in front of the television over there and the other side of the room. Going, awesome. They make stallions like they used to. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> but th that's the world we live in, right? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah, fluoride is crap. Go, go on. You were going to say something? No, I think it's, you know, it's all just marketing. Like you, I think you're hundred percent correct, you know, and, and probably dishonest marketing and the fluoride thing, who knows what was the originally driving this idea. You know, they did a bunch of epidemiology studies where they had entire cities with fluoride in their water and, and other cities without fluoride in their water. It was totally inconclusive. Some of the cities had less cavities. Some had more cavities on both ends of that spectrum. It made zero difference, you know? So they've done a lot, a lot of studies and the other studies they've done with x-rays and, and fluoride with, they actually took out teeth from cows. Um, and then they, they soaked them in acid with or without fluoride. And the original studies, they took x-rays and they said, Oh, look, the teeth that were soaked in acid with fluoride did better. They had less degradation, less breakdown. And that was the conclusion. That was really what kicked off the whole fluoride thing in the scientific realm. But they've redone that exact study. They redid the study, except instead of using x-rays, they used something called tomography. They used higher, te better technology. And they found there was no difference between <laughs> with or without fluoride, even that shitty study where they just take cow's teeth and soak them in acid, which again, is obviously not your mouth. It's a different environment. But even if you make this fake environment, the fluoride didn't even help. And that was the, the whole basis of fluoride being so important for us is with that original x-ray cow teeth study. So it's frustrating. I'll tell you a cavity story. I, I've never told this on the show before, but um, I guess I was around 14 years old. I, I had gone, I might have had one or two cavities when I was really young, right? And then right around the time I was like 12, I started getting cavities. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was 14, I, I mean, they were drilling and putting cavity, you know, filling these cavities in. And our family dentist still, still, I saw him at my uncle's funeral a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Dr. Edwards, um, he used to take me hunting as a kid. He taught me how to quail hunt and that kind of, because my family taught me how to rabbit hunt and all that kind of stuff. But he was into birds. And that's where I learned that from Dr. Edwards. And 
he he um we he, I was very close with his son and um my mom would go, you have an appointment after school today, go to Dr. Edwards, and I would walk from school to Dr. Edwards. And, and I almost every time I went, he was like, you have another cavity. Yeah, I go every, every six months. And I was like, Fuck, <laughs> I'm telling you, I brush and floss every morning. Yeah. At night, I, I brush and floss again. I said, I'm the most prodigious flosser you've ever met. I can't stand to have anything in my teeth, Doc. I'm, I'm that guy. And he was like, this is perplexing. I mean, you, you never really had them. And all of a sudden you have them and it, it, whatever. One day I go to visit him after school and he's looking through my mouth and he takes that little picking thing. He picks something out and he puts it on, on the little cloth and he goes, there's your culprit. So what? He goes, apple. Often hmm. do you eat apples? And I said, you know, because by the time I was 14, I was into health day. and fitness like you wouldn't believe. Mm. I started when I was really young, but apple a day keeps the doctor away. Damn. Damn. I never, you know, I would brush my teeth in the morning after breakfast. The only, he goes, apple is nothing but sugar and acid mixed together, and it gets caught between your teeth, and that's exactly where you're getting the cavities. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. Sure. After that, I never ate an apple unless I knew I could floss right away and get it out of my mouth and swish. I would floss and swish as quickly as I could if I ate an apple. And then, <laughs> by the way, I haven't had an I haven't had a cal a, a cavity since I was fourteen. Nice, then, nice. And yep. I found the culprit. People, look, folks. If you don't think you know, we cause our own demise. You, I was that age figuring it out, going, wait, that's what happened. The thing mm -hmm. I was using to be healthy was making me mm -hmm. unhealthy. You're right. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's backwards, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to be skeptical out there. I mean, <laughs> almost everything that you hear, you hear this idea like meat is bad, all this stuff. It's completely the opposite, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, you got to scrub up with soap all the time. You got to use all these creams all the time. Uh, not nonsense. You know, sunscreen, nonsense. You got to be obviously healthy, you, like, you don't want to get burned, but you want sunshine. You know, you want sunshine on your skin. Vitamin and look, you're, you're really light. You you still get the sunshine, right? Oh, yeah. I, I set a timer. <laughs> like when I go fishing in Florida or something, I set a timer for 20 minutes, take my shirt off, get as much as I can. And then I put the shirt back on. I go the other direction, put a sun hat, sun gloves, the whole thing. And by the way, you can use zinc sunscreen. They have sunscreen. It's just zinc. You know, it's, it's coconut oil and a couple ingredients and zinc and it's great. It doesn't have to be artificial estrogen sunscreen, but yeah. Uh, I, I use that on my nose when I go snow skiing because it's the only place I'll get red. You know, I'll get like oh, yeah. or be purple. I'll, I'll put a little zinc on my nose. Yep. Um, and folks, if you don't think that sunscreen is bad for you, the Great Barrier Reef is dying, no. dying. No. We didn't even get into that. We never yep. have enough time, Anthony. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's dying from sunscreen they Oxygen, know this no. as a fact right yep. is killing the great barrier it's called the great barrier reef that means it's great it's pretty big i was there i dove the great barrier reef a piece oh good for you of, didn't dive the whole thing it was great it's big it's you cool. scuba you scuba dive or just snorkel yes yeah, a scuba i was into oh, yeah. scuba. i was yeah. into scuba up until i guess up until like 30 you know 30 when i moved to la it, yeah you know, the, the scene, you know, when you live in New Orleans and you live near the Gulf of Mexico, yeah. there's a lot of great diving in Florida. You could get to Mexico mm -hmm. in five minutes. You can get to wherever, get to the Keys. Nice. Oh, you yeah. Know. And then, it, it, you know, I went diving a few times out in California. You always have to have a wetsuit. You always have it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, don't like I, did, I do it. I'm a scuba diver. Vinny. I got certified this year to rebreather dive. So I'm, I have a rebreather. Really? super yeah. high it's like a military thing and i even ice dive i go under the ice and dive and stuff i'm a certified ice diver here in oh Minnesota. wow you're, you're you're big you see i was gonna brag and say yeah i could do search and seizure but <laughs> that's as far as i got you're doing the stuff that that diagostino the reason he created yep, yep. Masters, the, the yep, exactly yeah yep. look at you oh yeah you i love it i had I no idea spear. man I, I like spear fishing mostly, you know, like in, in South Dakota, right next to Minnesota here, spear fishing for walleyes is legal. So you can just go underwater and swim around and chase walleyes with a spear gun. Oh, wow. 
and it's it's hunting underwater you know and i like it i think it's a lot more fun than just scuba diving around and i like scuba diving on the reefs and things like that just looking at wildlife but my favorite is spear fishing yeah. I used to do a little spear fishing uh, whenever I got to the Cayman Islands and places like that. Yeah. You know, we did some spear fishing, yeah. and um, and um, if you can find nothing else, in the audience is going to love this. I, you know, because we, I would do it uh, skin diving style because that gave the oh, yeah. fish a fighting chance. Oh yeah, and, um, and I'm scuba, I'm rebreather diving. <laughs> yeah, you're not with the rebreather, but you know, this is where you are like in 20 feet of water, so you're on the surface until you see what you want, and you go down, and then yeah. you get to get it and come up, but. If if, oh, I I would too, miss, yeah. if I would miss, I would always grab a conch or something, or at least bring a conch up, and uh, you know yeah. you could crack that and 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 cook it on the beach and do it all. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. It's it's a great sport. It's fun. I do some free diving too with my those giant. I have those carbon fins now. They they've created these carbon fins. Yeah, to get you down a lot quicker, so you can go down deeper and stuff. And it's all that's all. I love it all. You know. Outdoors. You don't find that you have trouble adjusting. You know, ear squeeze, nose squeeze anything no i practice i mean no not 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 really and i do a lot of training for uh, i they're called apnea tables like o2 apnea and co2 apnea tables so i do breath holds and stuff when i'm sitting in the sauna to practice for re, for uh, free diving and stuff it's there's a whole science to that that's super interesting too dom de agostino is an interesting mention you know this is the, he's the exact guy i was thinking of when uh yeah. you know if you're going to talk about the science behind that you should also look at um God, he's been on the show a few times. Um oh God. Um he's the guy that that brought uh, the ice guy to the world. Oh, Wim Hof, yeah. Wim Hof. Wim. Wim Hof. Who, who, what's the name of the guy I'm thinking of? He he's the breathing guy. He's written a couple of books on breathing. Oh, Patrick McKinnon, Mc, McEwen, uh, James Nestor. Yeah, James Nestor. Who who okay. made you get one of these things? Do you have one of these? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> nice. it, it causes your diaphragm. It works your diaphragm, and you can breathe in deeper. I keep it right here on my desk. Um, nice. Yep. Yeah, look, I, I look, people think, oh, you guys, yeah, we do all this stuff. This is on my desk, folks, mm -hmm. sitting right here. Yeah, I use this stuff. I'll, I'll do this exercise before I get on my, my rowing machine or my spinner. It just opens up your lungs. You for know? people just listening, that's it. For people that's listening, that's just a condom he's holding up. Yeah, I'm holding a condom. <laughs> <laughs> Put it over my head like how we went down from the seventies and then, extra extra large. Um, that's the kind of need anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, folks, you can go check him out. AJ Consulting Company. That's CO, not the whole word company. AJ Consulting Co. That's correct. No, it's company. It's the whole word company. Oh, it's the whole word company. It's a whole horrible website name. Jeez, yeah. Were you not thinking for once? You weren't thinking. <laughs> Oh, and I wasn't thinking this was 2010 when I made the website. So I had zero for, you know, <laughs> you should zero, also uh, get, you should also yeah. get AJ consulting code that redirects right to that. I should. Yeah. Talk to me. We'll, we'll figure it out. Go do it right now before we, this is coming out in three weeks. If someone hears it, they're going to buy it and they want to yeah. sell it to you for 1500 bucks. Probably so true. go get it and then redirect back to it. AJ yeah. consulting company, the whole word.com. Go check them out. Hang on, I want to say goodbye to you off the air. Folks, if you like what's going on here, you know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Um, before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTotteries.com. Click through the banner. It puts coal on the fire. Get my train down the track, and I can keep the show free for a gazillion years in a row because, you know, let's face it, uh, Dr. Anthony J's brother listens to this show, or at least he used to, and uh, hopefully he still does. Um, still does. <laughs> and we keep it free just for that guy folks um uh blip, 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 we have the the pdf you go check out the pdf go look at everything anthony j is doing because you will be impressed um the guy does not disappoint so on behalf of dr anthony j my name is vinnie tauterich put life into living and do it with enthusiasm